Hi there, Lindsay here, the frugal crafter. It's Sat Chat time. Yay, it's the weekend. Oh boy, I have been looking forward to the weekend. Uh, it's been, I don't know, my, my weeks lately, it seems like they start off really busy and then um, and then they kind of slow down a little bit. But this week, I don't know, I think I just like spent a lot of time just spinning my gears and, you know, just not uh, getting, getting that much done. I don't know, it feels like I've been doing a lot of work but not getting a lot of product from my work. Not a lot of, a lot of labor, but not a lot of fruits. You know what I mean? Do you have weeks like that? I'm sure we all do. I'm sure we all do, especially these days when, uh, man, I don't know about your part of the world, your part of the country, but we have had spike, uh, quite a spike in coronavirus here in the United, uh, the United States. Well, yes, in the United States, well, most of the world, but in Maine, uh, we've always been very low. We've been trending down. And then this week, it's, I think, honestly, I think it's all the rallies. Everybody's having rallies. Everyone's, all the politicians are having rallies. And um, I actually went and voted last night because um, there was a rally in my town, which is weird because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And um, they were they were going to do one in Bangor, but the governor called the business where they were gonna have it and said, listen, you can't have more than this many people. And um, so they moved it. And so then I was worried that all these people that attended the rally in my town were going to be spreading, you know, if, if all it took would be one person to be sick because, you know, people shared photos. There was not a lot of masking going on. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to go and vote so I can avoid the election day craziness. But typically I love election day craziness. I love election day. I think it's um, I think it's it's a privilege to take part in our democracy. And um I just, I love election night excitement and um, I wanted to vote on election day kind of with my community, but I'm just like, you know, I was kind of like, what if I get sick and I can't go cast my vote? I was just kind of like, I'm getting that done. Well, I didn't even know we had early voting in our town because this is a small town and I mean, you rarely wait in a line for more than a couple minutes anyway, if you do on election day. Um, but I was just like, you know, I'm just, I'm going to make sure it's done. You know, I'm not going to let anything stop me. So, uh, so I did go vote last night and there was no line. It was quite delightful. Um, and there was a mom there who had her daughter who had just turned 18 and, uh, she was voting for the first time. And I thought, oh, that's exciting. That's nice. It's good to see. It's good to see. Um, Hopefully my son gets down there and registers himself to vote. Um, what else? Um, oh, I got voice recognized this week. This was weird. Um, it's been years since I've been recognized from like the YouTube channel or anything. And usually it's like if I am in a city far away or at a stamp convention or something where I'm in context, it's kind of like, you know, see, seeing your teacher at the grocery store, you don't necessarily recognize them if, like outside of the school, you know, it's kind of like, oh, that's, that's wrong. It's out of context. Anyway, I was at uh, my, my son's last pediatrician visit and the, um, the nurse was like, she, she was just, the, the visit was just about finishing up and she came in to, you know, do shots and stuff. And she said, she was, are you from the Frugal Crafter channel, YouTube channel? She said, like, I recognize your voice. I love your videos. I'm like, wow, that has never happened. Like being voice recognized before. Uh, she's probably like, who is this crazy woman asking me a million questions about vaccines? <laughs> but I thought that was kind of neat. It did make my day. So thank you. Um... <laughs> medical assistant that just made my day uh so that was kind of fun because how how unusual i don't think like i think very few people that i know in person know that i do this for a living which is i don't know and i guess well maybe if they follow me on social media or something um because i'm not like active i don't i'm not very active in personal social media so it's like i have a facebook account but it's not like i post personally very frequently unless i'm just kind of like huh, what time is the assembly tomorrow at school or what are the kids when is picture day you know i'm just like you know that's what i post i don't like share a lot personally on social media so they'd have to be following a business page which so well, that's kind of neat um i just wrote a couple things down because i didn't like last week's listy listy all business business you know it just felt too uh i don't know it was too organized for me, apparently. I've got a new table here. Not a new table. What do you call these? Cubbies? So what happened was, earlier this week, um, my daughter, the clothes horse, who runs a sweatshop next door, who's always, like, altering everything with my sewing machine and fabrics and stuff, she, um, she has too many clothes. And she's like, I have too many clothes. I don't have a place to put them. I, I want to buy a dresser. And I said, and then she goes, then she's like, I want a Jackson's old dresser. I'm like, well, it's downstairs in the craft or in the, in Studio B, in the filming room. Go take it. You can have it if you want. So she did. She came down here. She emptied my stuff out. She took it and she, we traded. She had these cubbies in her closet and so she took the dresser to go in her closet. So, um, I'm, I have so much room back here. I have the tripod actually sitting between, this is the back wall 
and I've got the table in the normal place and the tripod is between me and the table and these cubbies so I actually feel like it feels a lot more roomy down here and I don't I don't have all cubbies filled and even the ones like I mean I've got like these little locker bins I don't even have a lot in those um so I guess I was wasting a lot of space with that dresser but I just I mean I used it because it was here I didn't want to go I don't want to go buy anything you know I'm just like I, I like to use what I have and like kind of clear clutter out of other parts of the house if I can put it to use um so yeah I have a lot of space and pretty much it's it's all flux except for this like top row where I've got stuff I use frequently like these are my water my um acrylic or gouache brushes that I typically use I mean I have more in the other room if they wear out or whatever I've got my blending things I've got pens and pencils that I usually use just right to hand but everything else is just kind of like things waiting to be reviewed or things that I'm going to use within the next two weeks basically if I'm not going to use it within the next week or two then it's back in the other area for storage uh, because I do like having this place cleared out currently I have all kinds of Yarka watercolors on my table because um it's kind of this this thing kind of snowballed i was uh i got these tubes here actually white knights white knights or yarka so this is you've probably seen these before this is or this this packaging or that logo this is the white knights watercolor and this is a set of 12 tubes and um the company asked me if i would be interested in reviewing their tubes because i reviewed their student grade um, sonnet watercolors a few years ago and their artist grade White Knights and then I remembered that I actually bought a, the sequel set because White Knights and Yarka St. Petersburg are the same company. It's from um, uh, Neveskaya Palitra. I, I know I just sorry Russian people I totally butchered that but um, but they're like the parent company and they they have like the Leningrad, the White Knights and the Yarka and then they also have the Sonnet, which is a wonderful student grade paint. Um, and so I reviewed the White Knights a couple years ago. I'd, had, I'd been using the Yarka St. Petersburg paints for a while because they were like the the cheapest watercolors when I was getting into kind of crossing over from student to artist grade watercolor back in the 90s. And I bought a trial set because um, Jack Richardson that that kind of imports all these products to sell in the United States would put new things on special. and. Um, I tried the uh, the Yarka pans, artist grade pans, and they also had a tube set, which I bought a couple of those and would use them up. They were just fantastic. I actually swatched out what I had left because I found some dried up tubes like a year ago or so, and I just kind of scraped them out and put them in a, in a pan. And they were really nice and bright too, especially for a student grade color. Um, so anyway, uh, so I started off with swatching out the tubes, and then I'm like, well, I really ought to see like how these compare to the pans. Um, and then, well, yeah, I bought that. I bought a sequel set, which was like another set of 24 that was from the Yark. Oh my gosh, this, what does this have anything to do with that chat? Anyway, um, I never even unwrapped them and swatched them, so I did that. So I've got all these Yarka White Knights pans, tubes, everything out, and I want to do a big comparison review video. So instead of just a simple review of the, of the 12 tubes, now I've got all this comparison going and my computer's making noise at me and, uh, it's just, it's just my overwhelming, I'm feeling, and I'm feeling very overwhelmed by it because what was going to be just a simple review has now turned into this big thing that I, now I'm feeling overwhelmed. So I've just kind of been in the state of, of kind of just like, eh, blah, and just feeling a little overwhelmed for a couple of days. I think it's because I'm getting, I'm wrapping up the figure drawing challenge I've got today. Well, today is Friday. I haven't drawn yet today. And I've got tomorrow, which will be Halloween, which is the day you're watching this. And then I will have done 31 days of drawing figures. And, um... It was a good challenge, but I am tired. I am so tired because I figured that when I did this, I would wrap, I work it into my normal day of, of work. Cause I'm like, oh, I do art for a living. I can work that in this part of my work day. I won't have these late nights every night, except for one, every night has been in the studio till like nine o'clock. And I mean, my poor husband hasn't seen me other than dinner. Cause I do, I do like, I take a couple breaks during the day. So I do tend to work a longer day because I, I start early and end late, but I take, you know, some chunks during the day because the dog needs to be walked which it's so cold it is so cold out right now I don't mean to complain but man 30 degrees this morning I was just not having I had like leggings under my jeans and I just felt like you know you feel like a sausage when you just have a, when you've got leggings and then jeans and then a tank top and then a sweatshirt and it just it's just you just feel like uh like you know one of those little when you see the little babies and they're in the snowsuits and they can't move their arms and legs because they just are like a stuffed sausage you know that's how I felt I do not like winter and I'm like and uh Jason's like well you're gonna a long winter if you're already bothered by this and I'm just like I was not having it I was in no mood 
I was so frustrated. I, I don't like the cold. It feels like it's way too early to be this cold. Um, so yeah, that was just, ah, I really dislike the cold. I, as soon as the Halloween decorations are, are down and put away, because right now they're kind of like draped and flammable, if I were to use a wood stove, I cannot wait to get the fireplace going and just camp out by the fire with a book or something, or my crochet, or something like very easy and like uh, kind of, um, what do you call that? When you do something that you just can kind of do without really thinking about it too much, you can watch TV at the same time, just kind of like busy work, I guess. I just kind of want to sit and crochet by the fire. I think I'm going to do that Sunday. That'll be tomorrow if you're watching this today. Oh, and also Sunday, what I'm going to do for Sketchbook Sunday, I'm actually going to do a flip through of all of my figure drawings from the monthly challenge, but they're spread across a bunch of different um, sketchbooks, so I'm gonna have to gather up the sketchbooks and I, I won't be able to go in order because I've just jumped around in too many sketchbooks drawing this month. But then I will do that and then I can put those sketchbooks away in the other room and just keep out, you know, the one I'm currently working on. Um, I painted a plum. Oh, this is something I did with the Yarkas because I've, I've done a few little paintings with the Yarkas. I did this plum here today. I used a little colored pencil on it to get the frostiness. Um, I like the paints, you know, spoiler alert. And I did this one yesterday with the Yarka watercolors ah, and a little bit of a watercolor crayon. That was kind of fun. Or is yesterday? A couple days ago. A couple days ago, I guess now. Um, and I did a tutorial of the metallic ballet dancer that's on my channel now on, um, it's shiny. It's on black watercolor paper. So it's kind of a fun technique. I think that would be a fun one to do with kids, especially if you have any dance enthusiasts. But you could do other, um, let me put that over there. You could do other subjects, obviously, on black paper. And it doesn't have to be black watercolor paper because when you're using like metallic watercolors that thick, you could even use acrylics for that matter. It would it'd be about the same for that technique. Um, thick cardstock would work just fine, like that uh, heavyweight black cardstock that you can get at Michael's. Um, I like that Recollections really heavyweight card base cardstock. It's like 110 pounds, but it's a real thick 110, not like the flimsy 110 um, weight cardstock that Walmart sells. So I uh, definitely recommend that. And I like their white and their white is much prettier than the white from Park Lane. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's brighter. The Park Lane is a little bit more gray. Um, I like the cream from Park Lane and from Michael's. Park Lane is a Joann's one. And I like the, um, I like the craft from Joann's. So we don't have a Michael's up here. They might have more colors now. I don't get to a Michael's very often because usually I go in the summer when I go down to Massachusetts to the um, West Springfield stamp show. But that didn't happen this year. Uh, luckily, I have plenty of cardstock. I'm not going to be running out anytime soon. Oh, that's an understatement, isn't it? Um, so anyways, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold, but luckily my room is heated. That has been, I just come down here, crank the heat. That's good. Uh, I don't think I could take another winter in the cold area of the basement. That was rough last winter while the addition was getting put on. That uh, I don't think I could do that again. That was really hard on my mental health. I gotta say, um, it's it's amazing how temperature can really can really affect things. Um, oh, I think I, I didn't. I was just looking at my little list. I think I've discussed everything I really wanted to. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, it's only thirteen minutes in. Uh, my chair is squeaky. I think I'm going to, I've noticed that this last, this last two weeks is that my chair is, can you, of course now I try to do it, I can't make it squeak, but I'm, well, I guess it's when I lean back, something is squeaking. I need to get out, um, get out my little oil can and, and, uh, and just kind of, um, lubricate it, I guess, so it doesn't squeak anymore. I, I don't know if it shows up on the, um, on videos or not. That's something, cause I, I, and I always mention it when it happens, like, oh, sorry about the squeak. You know, I probably, it probably doesn't even show up on the video, the audio, and I probably could just ignore it, but, uh, but I, I it's like out of my mouth before I can even stop myself. It, <laughs> diarrhea of the mouth, right? Um, let's see, what else is new? I don't feel like that much has happened this week. What about you guys? What's new with you? I posted my video on the sewing organization and um, I just remembered that I haven't posted the video of the um, the tall uh, drawer unit that's got the card making supplies in it. So I think probably after I'm done recording this, I'll post it so it'll be up when you're watching this video. Um, 
because I want, <laughs> this is going to sound completely awful, but I want to post video, uh, video every day if I have one until the election because, hey, we all need some crafty goodness because people are stressed out. It's a stressful time. Uh, but also, there's so many political ads running that it's actually a very lucrative time for us YouTubers to pump out the content because, uh, yeah, we get some dry spells here on YouTube, so, you know, when, when there's ads, there's ads going. Although I do try to go through, as long as I don't forget to go through and I pick out the ads in the middle. I might leave one if it's a really long video, but um, I go and pick out a bunch of them because they, they put them in like every two minutes. It's unreal. Uh, probably part of that is because of all the um, all the advertising. I know uh, if you're like on, on TV and radio, it's like used to be, because I used to work in radio and television, and um, they would try not to put the same candidates in the same ad break. Um, and definitely not back to back, but now, I mean, they are, the candidates are back to back on the ad breaks on TV and on the radio, so there's just no other space. I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy, the amount of ad spend. Even in the small, uh, smaller state elections, it's, um, it's pretty crazy. Uh, let's see, oh, you want some previews? Some things that I'll be reviewing? I actually, the next couple of reviews I've already filmed and they're already scheduled and I don't have the supplies in here anymore, but I can share some other things that, that I'll have coming up soon because because um, I really don't have that much to, to talk about this week. I got these, uh, oh, these are actually exciting. I will share these. Uh, these are the Parku acrylic paint pens and I really like them. I And here's a tip, save those uh, political mailers for, for starting and testing out your acrylic paint pens because they can be kind of dry and scratchy and regular paper just absorbs so much ink, um, especially when you're just trying to get the marker started. So these acrylic paint markers are, um, they're actually really nice and I used one of those glossy political mailers and they were so nice to start those pens on there. So keep a few of those um, so that you can have them for starting your acrylic paint markers. Anyway, I really like these. They're a nice one millimeter fine tip and I'll be reviewing those after I use them a bit. Just swatching them and doodling with them, I really like them. And uh, so those are by Parku. I will link those down below. Hopefully I'll remember to. If not, let me know. Um, they also sent these markers, which are pretty much very similar to a lot of the other budget markers, except there's a couple interesting things. They're in a hard, they're in a hard case, which I think would be nice for laying on its side for storage and also for keeping them organized. And it might be um, you know, because they're not going to fall down in the bag. There's also the plastic grid inside the container, which I'm loving that companies are doing that now because then you get more of like a an actual storage solution. They don't, they'll stay in order if you want to like group them by blending families and color families. And their, um, their swatch, they include the swatch that you color yourself and it's kind of, it's arranged kind of with your blending color families together, which I thought was really cool. Um, so that's, that's something new. And also, um, I haven't even swatched, well, I swatched the watercolor ones. I haven't swatched the regular ones, but I, um, I got these, um, color pencils and watercolor pencils to review. They're another budget friendly brand. And, um, I'm not going to link these up yet because I really haven't a chance to use them. I have used the, the paint pens a bit. Those are awesome. Uh, the markers for what well, so far so good. Um, but the paint pens, I think those are going to be kind of the uh, the surprise, the surprise winner of the things that I've got coming up to review. Um, and I'm also going to review. Oh, I don't think I can reach it from here. I've done a few sketches with the Derwent Light Fast. I just bought a set of twelve because they're very expensive. Um, but I've got I've got to use them a little bit more. I want well quite a bit more actually. I want to do a full piece on like maybe sanded uh, pastel paper and really kind of put them through their paces because, um, I really want to see what they can do. I don't think I'm going to be investing. Well, maybe I will, you know, by the time I'm done using them, that's another reason. Cause if I, if I do decide to invest in a bigger set, it's way cheaper to buy them by the set than individually. If I decide I want to get a set, then I really will want to have used up those 12 pencils because they're going to be duplicated in any set that you get, I think. Um, because that's kind of how the bigger name manufacturers do, like the set of 12 would be included in the set of 24, 36, 48, etc. Um, so I just want to make sure that I really like them. Uh, although they're really expensive and I have so many pencils that I like that I don't know. Uh, the big advantage to the Derwent Lightfast is that they're Lightfast. They actually remind me a lot of the, um, of the Derwent drawing pencils. Those are also Lightfast. Uh, they, but they've they got a thicker core. They're kind of drier. I like I like that. Although I do love my Prismacolors. I guess it just depends on what I what I'm gonna draw. And um, so yeah, I need to uh, need to 
puts more time in with that. I feel like, I think what the thing is why I'm feeling so exhausted today is that there's so many things I want to do and there's so many products that I want to try. There's so many things that, <clears throat> even things that I had that I just want to, that I've got an idea, oh, I want to do this project, but um, I'm getting overwhelmed because there's so many projects I want to do and um, only so much time to do them. I've been, I did, I have been keeping a list of the things I want to do and the projects I want to try. Um, because uh, I'm afraid I'm going to forget them because I'm not and, and it's like and I'm the type of person that if I don't just jump on an idea right away then um, then I lose interest so that's why I've got a shawl over there I've been crocheting for two years because you know I started off great I got a lot done and then I just kind of meh you know kind of lost interest and it's so close to being done it's only got a couple of rows left and I'll be finished with it but um, if I don't jump on an idea like shortly after I have it I just lose interest um, so it's like all these ideas that I have, if I don't, if I don't go for them, if I don't do them, I know I'm just going to lose interest, but then if I don't take a break, I feel like I'm going to burn out. So it's kind of like that, that weird, uh, that catch 22 there. So do you guys, do you guys experience that? Let me know in the comments below. I'm sure we all uh, are kindred spirits in, uh, in a lot of these respects. Um, that's really all I have. I don't want to just ramble for another eight minutes because, <laughs> because that would be pretty boring. Um, I don't think I have anything else to to talk about really I even though I, I feel like I had videos every every day this week um not a Christmas card video it was a live narrated one so I know some of you guys enjoy that for the you know have on in the background for the company um yeah I, I had a review oh yeah I had a review on Monday I thought this was going to be much more um much more shocking and entertaining that not only really shocking but I think that the the kind of like budget brand that I reviewed the kind of no name well not really no name brand but you necessarily wouldn't know them um it's a company that makes a lot of private label stuff I think that they make a very famous brand of paint um so you can check out that review if you're curious about that that was posted on Monday and um I just kind of feel like I feel like a lot of my tutorials are just missing the mark. Like I'm uh, either the things that I'm interested in, nobody else is, or I'm choosing the wrong things to make videos of. Cause like all these figure drawings, I've only recorded a couple of them. And then like, I don't, I don't know. I guess I, I, uh, I didn't want to record them all because I thought it would get very mundane. And also I just didn't want to, I just wanted to deal with the drawing. I didn't want to have to also ha deal with a video too. Um, it just, when you pile on so many different things onto a project, it can get very overwhelming. And, uh, that's probably why I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, so I didn't want to record everything. And then the things that kind of like people like, it's like, well, shoot, I didn't record that one. I recorded this one that nobody cares about. <laughs> so, and I'm also just feeling like less interested in recording everything, you know, just, and maybe... And, and I also feel that people are less interested in my in tutorials in general. And I don't know if they're feeling less interested in tutorials because I'm less interested or I'm less interested because fewer people are watching tutorials. I don't know. It's like chicken and egg situation. Um, but it's kind of weird. I am noticing that like tutorials on YouTube and I'm not just noticing on my channel, though I'm definitely noticing it on my channel, but I'm noticing that tutorials are doing less well and more like a... Uh, um, like talking to the camera like this or reviews are doing better or um, kind of vlogs, things like that are doing better on people's art channels. In fact, um, I saw an art channel change from being an art channel to being a blog, uh, vlog channel and she's, um, she's doing quite well at that. I don't want to go in that direction per se, but, um, but it's interesting. Things are always changing. Uh, people's tastes and um, what they like is always changing. So yeah, I guess you can either go with the flow or you can do your own thing and suffer the consequences, which always seems to be the, uh, that always seems to be the path I choose. Do my own thing and suffer the consequences. <laughs> but eh, you know, I could always, you know, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna do art for a living, then if you, well, if you're not gonna do what you wanna do, then you might as well just go get a job that will pay you and then do what you wanna do on your free time, I guess. Um, that makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm losing it. <laughs> Maybe she's bored with it. Maybe it's quarantine. <laughs> That's all for today, guys. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you're staying healthy. Be safe out there. If you haven't voted yet, you're going out to the polls, just um, be safe. Be safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Check on a neighbor. You know, take care of each other. Keep your community strong and safe and happy. And, uh, We'll see you next time. Till then, happy crafting and bye.